One of the most important and testable relationships of this reading is shown right here. This is the solo growth accounting equation. This equation is derived from the Cobb-Douglas function. You don't need to understand the derivation, but you do need to remember this equation. What it says is that the percentage change in output is equal to the percentage change in total factor productivity plus alpha times the percentage change in capital plus one minus alpha times the percentage change in labor. We've talked about alpha and one minus alpha earlier. Alpha represents the relative share of capital in the overall income and one minus alpha represents the relative share of labor in the overall income. But this relationship also gives us another interpretation for alpha and one minus alpha. We can think of alpha as an elasticity. So let's take the United States, for example, where alpha is approximately 0 0.3 and one minus alpha is 0 0.7. If the capital changes by 1% and all else remains the same, then the percentage change in output will be 0.3%. So a 1% change in capital with everything else remaining constant will lead to a 0.3% change in the output. So in that sense, alpha can be thought of as an elasticity with respect to capital. Similarly, one minus alpha can be thought of as an elasticity with respect to labor. So if labor changes by 1% and everything else remains constant, then the output will change by 0.7%. Over here, I've simply written the growth accounting equation in words. And since this is important, I will repeat the relationship. The growth rate of output is equal to the rate of technological change. So that's this part plus alpha times the growth rate of capital plus one minus alpha times the growth rate of labor. There are several uses of the growth accounting equation and those are shown over here. One use is to estimate the contribution of technological progress. Now, technological progress is considered an exogenous variable, which means that it comes from outside of this relationship. There are times when it is difficult to estimate the contribution of technological progress. But if we have this number, which is the growth rate of output, and if we have all these other variables, alpha, the percentage change in capital, and the percentage change in labor, then we can calculate this number as a plug. So we know this, 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 and we can simply calculate the percentage change in total factor productivity. Another use is to measure the sources of growth. So if we have, let's say, 6% growth, we can see how much of that growth is coming based on improvements in technology, how much is coming based on increase in capital, and how much is coming based on an increase in labor. The third use is to measure potential output. Now, the tricky part here is estimating the change in technology. But as I mentioned, this is an exogenous variable. We can use other methods to estimate the percentage change in technology. Once we have that estimate, we can combine that estimate with these other variables to come up with the percentage change in output. And obviously, if we know the current output and the percentage change in output, we can project or measure the future potential output. Here is another variant of the growth accounting equation. We can say that the growth rate in potential GDP is equal to the long-term growth rate of the labor force plus the long-term growth rate in labor productivity. So if in a given country, the labor force is increasing by 2% and the long-term growth rate in labor productivity is 3%, this would mean that the growth rate in potential GDP is 